Hello, hello, hello everyone and welcome back to the No Zone. Now this is the place where we have lots of fun as we laugh and we learn. My name is Ch 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 Charlie. <laughs> and I am Janet. And I am Marara. <laughs> and Janet. <laughs> I loved last week's show. Oh, so did I, Maya. I mean, we learned a lot and we had so much fun with our friends. Definitely. And today's show will be no different because we have a lot of fun lined up, including cool words and a fantastic trip out there. All right. And let's not forget about our man, Queasy Queez. But first up, let's go and meet our friends in the chill out zone. Come on. Yeah. Hello everyone! Hello! Alright, now before we start, why don't we say a big hello to everybody watching us at home? Hello! Now we're so excited that you came to help us with today's show. We are going to have a lot of fun, aren't we, Ma? Rara. Where is he? Uh, you know what? We left Marara back there and he was, you know, he was still doing Whoa, you know, that kind of stuff. So maybe if we call him out loud enough, then he'll come to his window. All right, so let's try. On three. One, two, three. Marara! Oh, really? Whoa. Oh, I'm sorry I'm late. I had to go and get a uh, paper and pen to write down the buzzwords for today's show. I'm sorry. Hmm, nice try, Marara. Well, we hope you at home also have a pen and paper ready to write down the buzzwords. Now, who can tell us what the buzzwords are all about? It's all about the farm. Excellent movie. Now, what are the buzzwords? Rabbit. Fence. Bull. Now remember these words are very important. Try and listen out and see how many of them you can catch in our next adventure. That's right. It's time for us to go and join our six favorite friends and see what they're up to. It's time for the... Maybe Mr. Zippo has a nice idea for us. Let's call him out. Mr. Zippo! Mr. Zippo! Mr. Zippo! Mr. Zippo! Hey look, he left us a note. Read it for us. Hey lovely kids, I have gone away to visit my friends out of town. I'll see you tomorrow. Be good and have fun, Mr. Zippo. Aww. Oh boy, he was to give us a great idea of what fun we could have today. We just have to figure out ourselves. What can we do today that doesn't involve getting dirty? I have an idea. Promise, all your ideas involve getting dirty. Okay, but doesn't this involve a tiny bit getting dirty? I mean, there's nothing else to do. Count me in two. Okay. Great, we're going to have loads of fun. Okay, this involves just a little bit of cleaning. And it's a cold season, so I wanted to warm up the chicken house for my cock and chicken. I knew it. A little dirty meant getting filthy dirty. Let's get started. I don't mind getting my hands dirty. Um, I think I'll babysit the cock and chicken. Watch them so that they don't turn into monsters. I wonder who will be doing babysitting, the chicken and cock or you. <laughs> <laughs> so the um, girls will uh, clean up the chicken house and the boys will make sure it gets warm, right? No way, we did not agree on that. The girls will fix the house, right? 
I think we should get grass and cover the whole wire mesh. It will be great. When the wind blows, it will blow off all the grass. I have the perfect idea. Boxes. Carton boxes. When it rains, they'll tear up. There we go. Sparkling clean. Yes, the second house is clean, but uh, what do we do now? Yeah. We have too much time and nothing to do. Perhaps we could keep ourselves busy by doing something interesting. What do you want us to do with those birds? Let's feed the birds. But how will you know how many seeds they eat to get full? Yes, good question. We don't want to overfeed them so then their stomachs burst. You should count. The grains are the size of sweets. How many sweets do you have before you feel you're full? Well, um, at least as many as my mom would allow. Counting won't work. Instead of feeding them, why don't you put them back in this cage? That should be more fun. Yes. Let's see which one likes a clean home. Uh, guys, um, uh, I don't think that's a good idea. Are you scared? Nope. Are you sure? Yep. We don't need to carry one of them. Okay, okay. Fine, I'll carry one of them. You guys have already cleaned the chicken house? Yep, and we are busy doing something else. How do you clean a house and then place it on a wet ground? No, it's dirty again and you'll have to clean it up. Maybe we can help you clean up. In exchange for what? You fix the chicken house and find ways to keep it warm. Now you're talking. We'll make the best chicken house ever. From Playhouse, this is Queasy Quiz. What chore did the boys choose to do? The boys chose to clean up the chicken pen. Who decides to babysit the cock and the chicken? Theo decides to babysit the cock and the chicken. That was an exciting adventure. Did you all enjoy it? And Queasy is just the man, and also thought that the buzzards were everywhere. Fence, hedge, bull, rabbit. Uh... <laughs> oh well, Mara, you have to hold on to your words because we know that that buzzer means Teacher Pendo is waiting for us. She has more fun with words on. Hello everyone! Hello Teacher Ben! Welcome to Cool Words. Now last time we discussed about some of the plants we are likely to find in a farm. We also saw the difference between a seed and a seedling. Today we will discuss about the animals we are likely to find on a farm. Now which animals are they? Daniel, do you want to give us some? Yes. Cows and goats. Very good. What other animals? Oh, oh Teacher Pendo. Yes, Marara. Um, sheep. Mm -hmm. Chicken, rabbits. Oh, and I've also seen donkeys in some farms, Teacher Pendo. You're right, Marara. And where do these animals live? Yes, Zige? Cows, sheep and goat live in the shed. Very good. And where do chicken live? Yes, Vanessa? At my uncle's farm, the chicken live in a small chicken house. 
That's right. Now let's look at these pictures of farm animals. As you can see, most of these animals are kept within an enclosed space so as to prevent them from wandering off from the farm. Now this space can be surrounded by a fence or bushes that form a boundary. And this is what we call a hedge. And where do rabbits live? Yes, Tobiko? Rabbits live in a hutch. That's right. Now, having animals in a farm means that a farmer has a lot of work to do. If you live in a farm or you visit relatives who live in one, you should offer to help. There's, there's always a lot of work to be done. Oh, oh Teacher Pendo. Yes, Marara. Now, I visited my friend's farm over the holidays mm -hmm. and we helped to milk the cows and cut some grass. And with the grass, we fed the goats. It was so much fun. That was good of you, Marara, to help. Now, in a farm, there are many activities that usually take time to complete. Activities such as digging, weeding, watering plants, or feeding animals take time to complete. That's right, Teacher Pendo. And while I was at my friend's farm, he said that he keeps feeding his rabbits as they tend to eat too much. And they looked very healthy too. It's good that you got to experience that, Marara. Now, notice what Marara said. He said, he keeps feeding his rabbits. Now, keep doing something means the same as keep on doing something. In a farm before the rain falls, a farmer has to finish digging and planting. He keeps working so that he can finish this. Well, I'm sure there are many things that you have had to keep doing either to be better at them or because something else depended on your performance. Now, let's hear these from the studio class. So, who wants to go first? Yes, Daniel? Hi, hi I had a bike race at the weekend. I kept riding my bicycle till Friday evening. Wow, and did you win the race? I was number two. Very good. And next time, you know, you will be fast if you keep practicing. Okay, who would like to go next? Yes, Zige? The bell was about to ring. I kept running so as not to be late for school. Yes, it's not good to be late for school. Okay, how about you, Marara? Oh, um, last night I read a very interesting book. I kept turning the pages of the book to find out what happened next. Okay, that's good. I hope you didn't sleep too late. No, no, teacher Pendo. Okay, and uh, Vanessa? I wanted to draw a good picture. I kept drawing until late in the night. That was excellent, all of you. It's very clear from these asses that when you keep doing something, you get better at it. Well, it's time for us to catch up with someone who keeps visiting new areas. It's none other than Maspidi. That's right. It is time for Out There. Hello, good people. Today I've come to visit a farm that belongs to a very good friend of mine called Tony, who is also a farmer like me. Ah, this is a wonderful surprise. My other friends from Mishima Children's Center are also here. My friends were here before me, so they have already seen everything. I've asked them to take me to their favorite part of the farm. So follow us and see where we go and what they want me to see. Oh, they wanted me to see the guinea pigs. This is Juguna. He helps around the farm. He wants me to hold one of the guinea pigs. He says that they are very harmless and that they do not bite. Look at how pretty they look. No wonder my friends wanted me to see them. Let us try feeding this one. Juguna says he is called Nembo. Oh, <laughs> it has refused to eat. It must be very full, maybe from eating all that hay inside the hatch. Look! <laughs> My friends are having fun touching it. They seem to love Nembo very much. 
Oh, this is wonderful. Oh, unfortunately, I've had to let my friends go now since they have already shown me their favorite place. And I'm also liking it. Okay, let me put him back so that he can relax. Nembo is very playful as compared to his friend Letty, who is very calm. An alternative to keeping guinea pigs is keeping rabbits. They require the same kind of care and they also live in hatches. Njuguna has told me that they also have a tortoise around. I don't have a tortoise in my farm, so let me go and see this one. This is the tortoise. Oh, it is very heavy. Look, <laughs> it's moving its head. Let me try feeding it. Oh, it must be very full because it has refused to eat my vegetable. Juguna tells me that you can know how old the tortoise is by counting the number of boxes on its shell. So let me count and see. Oh, wow, there are 38! That means that our friend here is 38 years old in Toto's ears. Okay now, let us go and see some cows. They might look just like the ones in my farm. This is Paul. He is the one who takes care of the cows. The first cow is called Happy Morning. She is 16 years old. Paul tells me that she produces 15 liters of milk in the morning and 5 liters in the evening. Look at that! She seems to have a very healthy appetite. <laughs> no wonder she produces all that milk. This is Daphne. She is only 4 years old and still a young cow. At the moment, she is not producing any milk because she is carrying a baby in her tummy. This is a salt block. It helps the cow to stay healthy and produce a lot of milk. I think they lick it like this. Did you know that cows also drink water just like human beings when they are thirsty? Yes, they do. Look at that! Come on, good people. Now follow me and let's see some chicken. Look, there is also a cock inside here. You can tell it's a cock by the red crown at the top of its head. There are also very tiny chicks here, but the mother hen seems to be very protective of them. Look at this! <laughs> this chicken seem to be very hungry. Being in the farm has always been wonderful to me. I can stay here the whole day. But it's time to go back to my cow, so until next time, bye! Well, thank you, Maspidi. Now, that was a wonderful trip out there. Hey, did you actually notice how he looked right at home on that farm? And he made it look like it was so much fun. But farms are Maspidi's thing. And, hey, speaking of fun, it's time for us to go straight into our first game. That's right. It's time to put our numbers in line and jump into the market. It's time for Maran's shopping list. to Marara's shopping list. I have been given a shopping list by my mom. 
but I don't know if I have the right amount of things. Really, Mara? You know we are definitely going to help you. Of course we're going to help you, Marara. Now, there are four items on the list, as you can see. Now, you will each take turns to help Marara complete the list by getting more items from the market and putting them into Marara's basket. That's right. Now, after your turn, you have to go back to the number team, tag the next team member like this, so that they can go up to the market and help you get the next item. Now remember, you have to make sure you do this before the market closes. That is right. Now when you help me get my shopping list correct, you do not go home empty handed. You get to take these fabulous books back to your school. Yes, you do. And not forgetting that Marara has some very special prizes for each one of you. Now the only question remaining is, Namatim, are you ready? Yeah! yeah! Oh wait, I know that sound. That means that the market is about to close. Team leader, off you go. Alright, the first item on the list is four cabbages. How many cabbages do I have? One, two. How many more do I need to make? Four? Two. Two. Go to the market. Alright, the second item is 12 bean bags. How many bean bags do I have? Six. How many more do I need to make? Twelve? Six. Six. Go to the market! Okay. Tag the next team member. The next item on the list is 15 potatoes. And how many potatoes do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How many more do I need to make 15? How many more? How many? Seven. seven. He says seven. 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 Come on, that's it, that's it. How many tomatoes do I have? One, two, three, four. Four? How many more do I need to make nine? Five. Five. Come on, come on, come on, that's it, that's it. Daniel, 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 Oh, the market has closed. Charlie, let's see how the number team did. Now that was really close because they just snuck in that last bit, but let's find out together how well they did. Now the first sum. Marara needed to get four cabbages. On his own, he only managed to get two. So how many more would you have to add to make four? Two. Marara, how many cabbages did the team bring you? One and two cabbages. Well oh. done, team. Congratulations, that is correct. You needed to add two cabbages so that the sum would look a little something like this. Two plus two is equals to four. Now the second item on the list is 12 bean bags. Now on his own, Marara only managed to get six bean bags. How many more would you have to add to make 12? Six. Marara, how many bags did the team bring you? The team brought one, two, three, four, five, six bean well bags. Well done team! Congratulations, that is actually Six. Now the sum looks a little something like this. Six plus six is equals to 12 bean bags. Now the third sum, Marara needed to get 15 potatoes. He only managed to get nine on his own. How many more would you have to add to make sure Marara had 15? Six. six. Marara, how many potatoes did the team bring you? I can count one, two, three, four, five, six. That looks like seven. Hold on. On the side that you're on, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, team, you brought one more potato. But nonetheless, well done. You only added one extra. The sum should look something like this, such that nine plus six is equals to 15. But well done nonetheless. Good job, good job. There's one sum left. Now, Marara needed to get nine tomatoes. On his own, he only managed to get four. How many do you have to add to make nine? Five. Marara, how many tomatoes are there? Oh, that's one, two, three, four, five. Well done, team! Congratulations.
congratulations, that is absolutely correct. You had to add five more tomatoes, five more tomatoes in order to make nine. So that's four plus five is equals to nine tomatoes. So let's give them a round of applause for solving their sums. Oh, sadly, number team, you do not get to take back the textbooks uh, to your school, but Mara has some special prizes for you. That is right. Do not worry. You have still helped me do my shopping. So for that, you can come and take your storybooks. Come, 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 come. Come tomorrow. Just go, go, don't be scared. Here you go. <laughs> All right, now, if you enjoyed playing Maya's shopping list, be sure to join Chapendo later on for more fun with numbers on Hot Numbers. Oh. I can't. I know. I, I was so I sad. Was, I was this close. One potato. One yeah. potato. Yeah. I, you know, after that, I just, I need to take a break. Yeah, it's time for us to catch up with our girl, Dunia, on... Our world. everyone, I am Dunia and today we are learning all about our water which is great because all of us need water every day to survive so it's a good idea to know as much about it as possible. Human beings are constantly producing waste water. We clean dishes, clothes and cook meals with water. Water is continuously flowing through our lives and is a key ingredient for our survival. Kenya has a population of 43 million people and it's still growing. These people are not spread out, but they group together in towns. For example, in Nevasha, there are 250,000 people and counting. With so many people in one place, it has become hard to deal with their wastewater properly. Also, these crowded communities often have poor sewage systems, which means their waste often ends up in the water supplies as well. And this is called water pollution. With the population growing quickly, it will become even harder to manage all the waste water. Something must be done quickly before we pollute all our clean water supplies. So, how can we fix these problems? Nevasha is a protected site for many beautiful birds that call Lake Nevasha home. They are not contributing to the waste, but are being badly affected by what humans are doing to their home. And this is not fair for them. As we have seen, there are many people living around the lake, and most of them are here to work for the big flower farms by the lake. So this means that not only is there waste from the people living there, but also from the farms. When it rains, chemicals run off the soil and into the water. But there is hope. There is something that can break down waste and makes it cleaner. It is called bacteria and it is free and exists naturally in our environment already. There are also some plants that can help too. So if we can use the natural power of bacteria and plants to help clean our waste, we can start tackling our water issues. But this is not a new idea. Plants and bacteria have always worked together to clean water in natural wetlands. However, now some humans are starting to clear these wetlands, not knowing that they are destroying a natural cleaning process that nature has provided our community. Some scientists saw this happening and are now trying to protect and rebuild some of the wetlands that were destroyed and also building new artificial wetlands. They are also educating the people that they cannot just remove these plants for their own selfish reasons because these plants are doing a very important job 
for the whole community, a job that is key for our survival. One plant that people sometimes remove is called water hyacinth. This grows over the surface of the water and can prevent boats passing and also make fishing difficult, so they do not like it. However, don't judge too soon. Water hyacinth is in fact our friend because it is very good at cleaning wastewater. Some flower farms are using this plant in their artificial wetlands. They do not release any wastewater into the lake anymore, but instead send all the wastewater to the artificial wetlands. It gets cleaned by the hyacinth and then recycled back to the farm. Water hyacinth is like a filter, and there are others like papyrus. They help clean our water. The shortage of water has been a huge issue in Kenya for some time. But if we all work together to dispose of our wastewater carefully and educate ourselves about these natural and clever solutions, we can ensure cleaner water for our future. That's all for today, but tune in next week for more incredible stories about our world. Bye! Thank you, Dunya. We really enjoyed that trip. Yes, it was very exciting. But right now, it's time for us to take a short, short, short break. But do not go too far. We still have so much fun lined up. And please remind us, what else is coming up? Spell it! Hot numbers! Oh, oh, well, that's me. Uh, quizzy quiz. And with all that, we have to see you after the break. So don't go away. We'll be back in a bit right here on the No Zone. Welcome back to the No Zone. This is a place where we have lots of fun as we learn. Let's remind ourselves what the buzzwords are. Rabbit. Fence. Bull. Hedge. Now all of these words teach us about the farm. Oh, I love farms almost as much as I love the world. And guess what? All the animals on the farms are my friends. <laughs> hey, 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 it's Teacher Pendo time. It is Teacher Pendo time. Yes, obviously, Marara is excited and we hope you're excited as well because it's time to go into the learning zone and have more fun with numbers on... Hot Hello everyone. Hello, Teacher Pendo. Welcome to Hot Numbers. Well, Teacher Pendo. Yes, Marara. I had so much fun with my siblings this weekend. Ah, what did you get up to? Well, I showed my siblings how we could make shapes using different materials. Ah, that's interesting. And what materials did you use? Oh, we used sticks for the squares, mm -hmm. rectangles and triangles. Then we used leaves to make circles and ovals. Yeah. And I had so much fun doing that. I also found out that I could draw shapes on the ground using a stick. Ah, that's very interesting, Marara, because today we are going to trace shapes using different objects. Well, did you pen off? Yes. Now, is that why we have all manner of things on your desk? That's right, Marara. I have different things of different shapes, which we will use to trace different shapes. No, oh, Teacher Pendo, yeah. this looks like it's going to be so much fun. Yes, it will. Now, before we start tracing shapes, let's first look at the items on my table and see what shapes they might trace. So the first one, what shape do you think this one might trace? Yes, Mutevu? A square. That's right. It will trace a square because the bottom has four equal sides. Okay. And what about my blackboard duster here? What shape do you think it will trace? Yes, Danu? Rectangle. Very good. It will trace a rectangle. If you look at the sides, you will notice that the opposite sides are equal. And just like a square, it has four sides. All right. Next, I have a tin here. Now look at the bottom of the tin. What shape do you think it will trace? Yes, Kavindu? A circle. That's right. This one will help us draw a circle. 
Well done. Okay, now let's look at another shape. What shape do you think this one will trace? Yes? A triangle. Very good. Now I have one more item. So what shape will this one help us draw? Marara, you've been very quiet. That one will help us draw um, uh, um, an oval. That's right, Marara. Very good. Well done, all of you. Now, on the table, you also have your paper and pen. Now, I'd like you to use these items to trace different shapes. Okay? So I'm going to give you a few minutes to trace different shapes, and then you're going to tell me what shapes you have drawn. So go ahead. Pick up some items and draw different shapes. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see we're all doing very well. So Mutebu, will you show everyone at home what shape you have there? What shape do you have? A square. A square, very good. So hold it up and show everyone at home the square shape you have. And as you can see, it has four equal sides. That's a nice square, Teacher Pendo. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Okay, Mutebu, you can put it down. Danu, why don't you show everyone, what shape do you have? Rectangle. Very good. Show everyone at home your rectangle. Okay, so I'm seeing two rectangles there. This one is a bit faulty, so this one is almost perfect. But Teacher Pendo, we can, we can do another one later after the lesson. Yes, practice makes perfect. Very good. Kavindu, what shape do you have? A circle. Very good. Why don't you show everyone at home? Oh, that is a nice circle. Yes, it is. Marara, can you do better than that? Oh, yes, I can, uh, with my eyes closed. <laughs> okay, and finally, why don't you show everyone at home what, what shape do you have? Oval. Oval, very good. Show everyone at home the shape you have there. Oh, that is so nice. Teacher Pendo? Yes? It looks like a football field. It does? Yeah, with the trucks. Okay. Well done, everyone. Remember, you can draw interesting things using shapes. Why don't you practice tracing shapes at home? We hope to see you next time for more hot numbers. Oh, Teacher Pendo. Yes, Marara. I'm definitely going to trace more shapes. Aha, uh -huh, that's good to know, Marara. But you might want to wait because right now it's time for us to get creative on Creative Zone. Welcome to Creative Zone. It's time for us to have fun with rhyme. Like we do all the time. And join our friend who has great lines. So that our poetry skills can really, really shine. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That was actually very good. You guys are getting very good at poetry. Well, that is because of your lessons and tips. Yes, that's true. We are getting very good and we should thank you for that. And we're actually here to find out what more we can learn. Well, you guys are really so good. I don't know. But... I think it would be really fun if we can write something together later. Wow, Noel, that would be awesome. Well, Charlie, yep. I think you and I should grab our pens and papers and write something down. Oh, yes, I like that idea. I like that idea. You know what? I'll race you. Let's go get some paper. Go on. <laughs> All right, friends. This year we have learned quite a bit about poetry. We learned that a poem is art using words and they work in verses. Remember that? We also learned that poems can rhyme and we can make a poem out of any words that we come across. We wrote poems out of buzzwords just by finding words that rhyme with one another. Some of you sent a few in and they were wonderful. Do you remember what a limerick is? A limerick is a poem that uses the A-A-B-B-A -A -B -B -A pattern to make a lovely poem. It's usually five lines and it's very funny to read. We wrote one using buzzwords last time. Do you remember yours? Good job. Now, we also talked about free verse. These poems don't have to rhyme. They're just verses telling you a story or a feeling in a beautiful way. Remember, poetry can be about anything. As a writer, you get to choose the topic. Well, we've talked about all this and cannot forget the poetry competitions we have had over the year. And we have one final one lined up. The aim is to write a good poem in 140 characters, which is the size of a text. The Nozon Text Poetry Challenge is built just for you. 
So get writing and ask your parents to help you send your poem text to the number 30606 and the best poem will be read out on air. So get sending. Time is running out and I know you don't want to miss out. Well, that's all we have time for today, but you can keep going on with the fun. Join Charlie, Janet and Marara in the Chill Out Zone. For now, bye! I love Creative Zone. I mean, it's so great to see so many people being so creative. Oh yes, I love it too. But now, I, I don't know. I'm not sure what I want to do first. Uh, whether to dance or sing. Well, actually, that's a very hard decision, Marara. But if you stick with the no zone, I'm sure you'll decide on something eventually. Oh yeah, but I want to go and read up on um, art. Oh well, Mara, your reading will have to wait because it's time for us to have fun with letters. That is right. It's time for us to step out of the shadows and into the spotlight. It's time for Spell It. Animal, animal. chapter, building, narrow, building. respect, Meter. respect. Deep. deep, vegetable, work, work. work. Spell it. <laughs> now, this is the place where we play with our words and our letters. Kavindu, Mbuvi, Mutevu, and Danu. You are about to step out of the shadows and into the spotlight to compete for the title of today's Nozon Spelling Champion. The winner of today's competition will win their school a Nozon Dictionary and a very special prize for themselves. Each contestant has just 25 seconds to spell correctly as many words as they can. If you would like a word repeated, simply say repeat and the word will be repeated for you. Are the rules clear? Yes! Yeah. Thank you. Now, all of today's words will be coming from our topic of what, Manara? The farm! As we get started, we'll get Kavindu into the spotlight first. So come on down, step in the spotlight. Kavindu, your 25 seconds of spelling starts now. Dry. D R Y. Tools. T W O L S. Rick. R R A K E. Soil. S O I L. Farm. F A R M. Water. W A T E R. Cabbage. C A B B A G E. Oh, well right. done, Kavindu. Right. Come on back. Come on back. Mbuvi, it's your turn now. Come on down and step in the spotlight. Mbuvi, your 25 seconds of spelling starts now. Axe. R R X E. Trim. Repeat. Trim. T R I M crop C R O P S weed W E E D cock C O O Well done right. Vivi. well done well done Vivi. well done Mutevu it's your turn now come on down and step in the spotlight Mutevu, your 25 seconds of spelling starts now. Wet. W E T. Bull. W O L. Tree. T R O E. Seed. S O E D. Rose. Repeat. Rose. R O S. Maze. M -A -A. Well All done, right. Mutevu. Come on back, come on back. And now it's Danu. Danu, come on down and step in the spotlight. Danu, your 25 seconds of spelling starts now. Dig. D I G. Bush. Bush. Yes. B U S H. Grow. G R O W. Oxen. O X E N Sand Sand Yes S A N D Beans Beans Yes B E A N S Vegetable oh, Well right. done Danu Very well done.
Well done, everyone. Charlie. Yes. Please ba -ba! reveal the results. Okay. Well, everybody did very, very well, but there can only be one winner. So I'll start with Mbuvi. You spelt the word crops correctly. However, the word that Janet asked for was crop. And Mutevu, you ran out of time before you could finish spelling the word maize. In joint third place, we have Mbuvi and Mutevu. Let's give them a round of applause. Well done, Mbuvi and Mutevu. In second place, with six words spelled correctly, we have Danu. Let's give a round of applause. And with seven words correct, it's Kavindu. Which means that the winner of today's nose and spelling competition with a strong seven word spell correctly is Kavindu. Step forward, Kavindu. Congratulations. You are today's no zone spelling champion. Here is your dictionary. Now show everyone at home a round of applause for Kavindu. <laughs> Congratulations, Kavindu. You can step back. Well, congratulations to all of you for spelling so many words correctly. And for that, you each get a storybook. So come and get your storybooks. Come, 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 come. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, Charlie, that was a close round of spelling. Yes, it was. And everyone did very well and had some very big words to spell. But right now, it's time for us to take a break. Yes, it's time for us to join Stupenda on Cool Words. Cool. Welcome back to Cool Words. In this lesson, we are going to make plurals of words from singular words. I hope you all remember what plural is. Oh, yes, teacher Pendo. Mm -hmm. Plural is when a word stands for more than one thing or more than one person. It means many. Aha, uh -huh. thank you, Marara, for reminding us that. Now, singular means one, while plural means more than one. Now, most plural words are formed by just adding the letter S. For example, Boy, boys. Now look at what I have on my board here. One tomato, two tomatoes. Now what do you notice? You add ES. Aha, that's correct. We added ES to make it plural. Now let's look at the following words that I have here on my board. Now we are going to make plurals in the same way. Basically we are adding ES. Okay, so I want you to use the pen and paper you have in front of you and then let's hear the answers you have. So let's write. Okay, so let's move on with the answers. So, Marara, what's your answer? One potato? Uh, one potato, um, three potatoes. Three potatoes, very good. Okay, Zige, you're going to be next with your answer for the mango. One mango? Four mangoes. Very good, four mangoes. Vanessa, I saw you write the buffalo in plural. What's the plural? Six buffaloes. Excellent, so we simply add the ES to it. All right, and Daniel, you wrote the echo? Many echoes. Many echoes. And of course, you can see echoes are not countable. They are part of the uncountable noun. So we say many echoes. All right, and one hero? Tobiko? Two heroes. Very good. Heroes. Excellent. So we simply add ES. Well done, everyone. You all make it seem so easy. Now remember, these plurals are made by adding ES to the singular words. Well, I'm afraid that's all we've got time for today on Cool Words. Be sure to join us next time for more fun with words. Right now, it's time for us to settle down and enjoy another story. Yes, it is time for Story Zone. I will be reading the story, I will keep my promise. Sam and Joy are twins. 
Sam is a boy, while Joy is a girl. Early in the morning, the cock crowed, Cuckoo! Cuckoo! It was Saturday. Sam and Joy were not going to school. Sam called on Joy, Wake up, Joy! Wake up! Then Joy jumped out of bed. Stop shouting, Sam! I'm up! What day is it today? Sam gave Joy a big smile. Today is Saturday, our day to play and play and play. Sam and Joy jumped up and down. They were very happy. They went to the kitchen, but Mother was not there. Sam saw a jug of milk on the table. Let us drink the milk, then we can go out to play, Sam suggested. Sam and Joy drank the milk very fast. Off they ran to play. They played in the soil. They threw soil at each other and jumped in the soil too. The children finally felt tired and very dirty. They felt very hungry too. Sam said, Joy, I'm hungry. I'm hungry too, Sam, Joy said. Sam and Joy remembered a mango tree nearby. They ran to the mango tree. Up they climbed the mango tree. They picked many mangoes. Some were green, others yellow. The mangoes looked sweet and juicy. Sam picked one and took a big bite. Joy took a big bite too. Mmm, said Sam. Mmm, the mangoes are very sweet, said Joy. All along, Sam and Joy forgot something. Do you know what it was? Sam and Joy did not remember to wash their hands. When they had eaten enough mangoes, they climbed down from the mango tree. Sam and Joy started playing again. They ran, jumped and hopped. I'm very thirsty, Sam said. I'm very thirsty too, Joy said. If I get water, I will drink more than a cow drinks. They walked to a river with brown water. Sam dipped his mouth into the water and drank the same way cows drink water. I can drink water like a cow too, Joy said as she drank water from the river too. The children forgot something very important this time again. You tell me what it was. Yes, they forgot that the water is dirty and not good for drinking. With no thirst anymore, Sam and Joy went back to play. After playing for some time, Joy said, Sam, I will visit the toilet. Joy ran to the toilet. She took too long in the toilet. As soon as Joy came out of the toilet, Sam said, Joy, I will go to the toilet too. Sam ran to the toilet holding his stomach. He came out after some time. The children continued to play. Sam, Joy, please come home, Mum called. The children ran back home. They were now hungry. When they got home, Mum served the rice and beef stew. Sam said, I can eat very fast. I can eat very fast too, Joy said. Instead of using spoons, the children decided to scoop the meal with their hands. Once again, they forgot to wash their dirty hands before they ate. After eating, Sam and Joy were very full. The twins took a nap under a tree. Ouch! Ouch! cried Sam as he woke up holding his stomach. I am not well. I have pain in my stomach, he said. After a short time, ouch! Ouch! cried Joy, who woke up, holding her stomach. Sam, I am not well too. I have pain in my stomach. Mother saw them and ran to where they were sitting. What is wrong, Sam? What is wrong, Joy? Mother asked. Ouch! cried Sam. I have pain in my stomach, he said. I have pain in my stomach too, cried out Joy. Mother called father. Father and mother took Sam and Joy to see the doctor. What is wrong with the children? asked the doctor. I have pain in my stomach, Sam said. I have pain in my stomach too, Joy added. Let me check what is wrong with you. Come and lie down, said the doctor. 
When the doctor asked Joy to open her mouth, a bad smell came out. Her teeth were yellow. Do you brush your teeth? Joy asked the doctor. Joy said, No, I do not brush my teeth every day. Then the doctor asked Sam to open his mouth. There was a bad smell too. Sam too said he only brushes his teeth once in a while. It is good to brush your teeth after every meal. It keeps your teeth clean and strong. When you brush your teeth, your mouth smells good too, the doctor told Sam and Joy. The doctor gave Sam and Joy some medicine. This will make the pain go away. Now sit up. I will talk to you about your sickness, said the doctor. It is important to keep yourself clean by taking a bath every day. If you do not take a bath, you will get germs that make you sick. You may also get jiggers, the doctor said. The doctor looked at Joy and Sam. Joy and Sam looked very frightened. Do not be afraid. All you have to do is take a bath every day to keep your body clean. You need to have clean hands all the time. Keep your nails short too. Dirt and germs hide under the nails. Always clean your hands with soap and water to keep them clean and free from germs. The doctor continued. Always remember to wash your hands with soap and water after visiting the toilet. Sam and Joy remembered that they had not washed their hands after going to the toilet when they were playing. Before eating any food, always wash your hands with soap and clean water. If you do this, you will not have pain in your stomach, the doctor continued. Sam and Joy remembered about the mangoes and lunch. They felt sad for not keeping clean. On Monday, Sam and Joy went to school. They were very happy to see their friends. Sam and Joy said to the teacher, Teacher, today we want to share our promise. The teacher asked the class to listen to Sam and Joy. I promise to keep myself clean. I promise to brush my teeth after every meal. I promise to take a bath every day. I also promise to always wash my hands with soap and water after visiting the toilet and before meals. Together, Sam and Joy said, I will keep my promise. Every morning before class begins, the teacher made the pupils repeat the promise. She also checked if the pupils kept the promise to keep clean. The End From the Story Zone, this is Queasy Quiz. What did Sam and Joy have for breakfast? Sam and Joy had milk for breakfast. Why did Sam and Joy go to see the doctor? They went to see the doctor because they both had stomach ache. I really, really love that story. It was just so, so um, entertaining. I know what you mean, Manara. And actually, I really enjoyed it as well. Now, I also enjoyed Quizzy's Quiz. Now, what about you, friends? Did you all enjoy that? Yeah! <laughs> Me too. And that story is a perfect way for us to end today's show. Did you have fun? Yeah! Excellent. We loved having you here helping us with today's show. And we loved having you as well. Now the Nozen will be back right here next week for more fun and learning and games. So make sure you join in right here next week. So come on everyone, let's say goodbye. <laughs> Bye! Bye.